Hi everybody, my name is Chris Burns, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I go from this to this, studying Kohei Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia. Let's get into some studies, everyone. Hey everybody, welcome back to the second episode of Kohei Horikoshi Art Studies. This is a brand new series that I am doing on YouTube, and I, I'm super excited about it just because I love Kohei Horikoshi and My Hero Academia, but I'm also super excited to learn more about how he does his coloring styles for clothes, skin, hair, and more. So without further ado, we're going to get right into this video. So today I'm working on a piece that I drew up for Fan Art Friday, but I'm also using this piece to go through skin, hair, and clothes for the first part of this series for Kohei. And I thought, you know, why not do one of everyone's favorite rough characters from the series, Bakugo? Because I've actually never really drawn Bakugo before, and you know, I figured why not take the time to learn how to draw him and to learn some cool coloring techniques for the first part of the series. So before we get into the coloring of Bakugo, which you can see I'm doing right now, let's study a little bit more about Kohei's style for coloring hair. So as I was doing some research for Kohei for how he colors hair, he does it a little bit different for each character, which I think is really, really unique and really cool because he doesn't have this kind of one set way to do hair for all of his characters. It's more like he has a blueprint and he breaks the blueprint depending on what the character's quirk is, what the character's personality is, and how simple the character is. So when you see some of his artwork, whether it's for an illustration or if it's for a cover of the manga, you can see that each time a character might be colored differently depending on obviously what's happening in the scene or you know what character it actually might be. And to break that down a little bit further for you guys, for example, if you look at Deku's hair like I have on the screen here, sometimes Deku's hair can be very, very simple. It could be only two tones of green, but then like this one, it could be, you know, three and four because he's adding highlights, he's adding shadows. You know, it might, it might be adding something from the quirk or maybe from somebody else's quirk like fire or, you know, water. It, it always changes depending on the environment and Kohei normally pushes the illustrations as much as he can while retaining the originality that he did for like the first cover of the series. So as I was studying Kohei more and more, I wanted to, since I was doing this picture of Bakugo, I was like, I need to study how he colors Bakugo's hair because sometimes Bakugo's hair is very, very simple, like on this cover, but sometimes it's very, very complex as if it was done with color pencils or markers, but I can guarantee you, or at least 75% assure you that it was done digitally. So while coming up with this illustration for Bakugo, and I should say I'm not coming up with this illustration, it's a reference picture by Kohei himself. Here's the uh, reference image of the sketch, but I took inspiration from this picture right here to work on how he colors hair. Because like I said, I've never drawn Bakugo before, so this is my attempt in drawing Bakugo a little bit my style, but also using that reference picture from Kohei. Now, if you study this picture really, really closely, you can see that Bakugo's coloring and Deku's coloring from the foreground look completely different. Deku looks like he was done completely with color pencil or some type of marker hybrid, while Bakugo still regains some of that digital manga look. And he's blended the two together perfectly because Deku's in the foreground and it's blurred, but Bakugo's in the background. But he still wants to convey that there's detail in Bakugo through the skin, clothing, and hair, even though Bakugo is, is wet in this scene from being in that water. So obviously while drawing this image, I didn't want to recreate the original illustration or at least the coloring from this picture because there's reflections from the water. So it's giving Bakugo's hair tips a little bit of a, a green hue because of the water and the lighting and all that stuff. I really just wanted to get the basics down, like how Ko Kohei picks the shadows, how he blends everything together. Just a really rough, just to start getting my hands dirty and really trying to break down more of Kohei's work. So from what I found, Kohei likes to use a rough, a roughly three tone system for his colors, at least for hair. He likes to do, you know, obviously a light color for the highlights, maybe, and, and that might tie into the base color as well. Then he likes to do a secondary shadow, and then he likes to do a third shadow. Sometimes he likes to do a third shadow. I've seen him work with some pictures before where it's really only just two colors, and he blends them in a certain way that makes it look really, really good. So for this illustration, I kind of did the two-tone method. You can see on the side of my screen here, I have, you know, a base coat or a base coat, a base color. And then I have a secondary color, which is the shadow. But throughout the illustration, I actually went in and added a third shadow. And I actually added a fourth shadow for the highlights, for the rim light and all that kind of stuff, just to try to push it a little bit more and see how far I could really go with it to see how close I could keep it to Kohei's original kind of style, but also see, you know, if I could push it more and kind of add some stuff in myself to see if it really works or if I should 
kind of stick more you know on the original because at the end of the day after this whole series is done my goal is to have successfully incorporated some of Kohei's techniques into my own work that way I can become a better digital artist myself and try to push myself that way. So for those of you that have followed me since the beginning, you know how much my art style has changed. But for those of you that are brand new to my channel and brand new seeing this video, I would like to show you guys some of what my work looked like, you know, two years ago. So you can kind of see a reference on how I kind of developed my own art style, but also how my coloring evolved as well. So here's some work from roughly 2018 when I was beginning my series with Chikara, showing you kind of my coloring techniques, kind of what I used to do. It was very, very simple and very, very basic because it was I was new to digital in, in the terms of trying to make a full on series. But also I knew the basics because I was coming from traditional. So I knew the basics or at least I like to think I knew the basics of color theory in, in terms of just trying to you know make things look good. So people could be like, oh, you know, that character has this color palette. This character has that color palette, A, B and C. So some of these pieces that are on the screen are from my early work um, in terms of my Chikara brand and Chikara series. Now on the screen, I'm showing you some stuff from the more recent work that I've done. So you can see how I've evolved over the last couple of years in terms of my coloring technique, my style. It's still relatively simple because I, for a while, I still want to keep it looking more as if it was an anime rather than a digital illustration. But I'm trying to get away from that because I really, I feel like that if I can crack Kohei system for color, then in turn my own work will start looking a lot better and slowly and slowly I can start adjusting and pulling away from traditional um, mediums as much as I do and try to start doing some more digital stuff because in the future of my series about the halfway point there's going to be a quote unquote part in the story where I want to start incorporating digital illustrations more than traditional Copics if at that time the fans you know like to see more Copic work in terms of the manga covers I'll roll with it and stick with it but my goal is to be a a really good digital artist before that happens that way once the halfway point in the series hits it's like you know boom check this out like you know we're doing some digital stuff now for the back half of the series um, but we'll see that's all in the future I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that but <laughs> that's like my goal so now that you've seen some of my older work and some of my newer work you can kind of see in a rough where I'm coming from and where I'm trying to get in terms of my digital coloring because there's some artists on Instagram that I follow that are amazing digital artists like I see their work and I'm just like oh my gosh if I could just if I could just draw stuff like that it would be so much easy like it would be so much easier in terms of creating because as we all know once you learn how to do digital stuff it, it becomes 10 times faster you don't have to buy materials you know it's cost effective it's just it's overall just way better to get into digital rather than trying to do stuff traditionally unless you just love traditional stuff which i agree i love my copics i love my markers i love doing all that because it brings that aesthetic to me personally from when i grew up reading naruto and all the other older mangas that were done traditionally in terms of the covers and illustrations that's what i like about it but for some people they didn't really grow up with that or they might just not like it because you know maybe they just suck on drawing on paper for. But all of that aside, all of that's just personal um, information, I guess, about me. <laughs> but if you if you guys understand, if you understand me and you understand yourself, if you love traditional, go for it. If you love digital, go for it. I'm not saying do either one because I do both. But just for me personally, I definitely want to see myself grow in the next year in terms of digital coloring just to see how far I can push it. And if it's something that I want to invest in more for my series. So here are my final thoughts um, for this video. So my final thoughts are coloring hair is, is a lot harder than, you know, I, I thought it would be working digitally um, because for, like I said, for coming from Copics, it's literally just, you know, I personally just use like maybe two shadows, maybe three, and then I work digitally to edit. So for me, it was like really, really, really quick. But doing this style of coloring for Bakugo's hair, it took a while. Like it took a good like hour and a half, maybe almost two hours for me to really come from beginning to end. And even then, personally, I don't think it's as close to Kohei style as I would want it to be. It still looks a little off in my opinion. I know some people probably like this looks amazing, but for me, I can see the difference and I can, you know, I can see that it's not quite where Kohei has his work. So for me, I'm not I'm not there yet, but that's OK, because this is the beginning of the series. You know, this is only the second video. We are going to be revisiting hair multiple times. This isn't the only time I'm going to be studying hair by Kohei. There's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot. I'm planning on doing Deku soon just because his hair design is is out of this world. And it's really, really cool. And I will learn how learn how to do it. So that's coming eventually. But 
I'm, I, I did have fun drawing this. Um, this is definitely fun. I'm enjoying the series so far, learning more about Kohei and learning more about myself. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm trying, like I said, trying to get myself to be where I want to be. But also hope this study can help you guys too and learn more about Kohei if you don't know about him already. And learn more about yourself and see if this is something that you guys want to learn how to do for your own art arsenal. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to comment if you loved it. Um, comment what you're excited about for this series. Let me know what you want to learn about Kohei as well, because like I'm doing the whole package, so it's going to be pretty, pretty fun. I'm really excited. Make sure to keep an eye out for the Fan Art Friday, because I'm going to be doing this full illustration for this upcoming Friday, but I'm also going to be taking the video parts and breaking them down, like the skin and the clothes and that stuff, for multiple episodes for Kohei, at least for this illustration. So anyway, guys, stay drawing, and I hope to see you for the next video on Fan Art Friday. And as always, always keep creating keep being awesome and thank you for all the love and thank you for all the opportunities that you guys give me wow i can't even talk because i'm so excited <laughs> but i will see you guys for the next video peace wow.